TLC. Would you guys stand with us? Oh, he's a man of his word. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness.
with Cheryl just even this day I said it's not our works of righteousness but it's the shed blood of Jesus Christ that makes us worthy I'm going to tell you if you're in this room today and you've been playing the comparison game you've been looking in the mirror and you see imperfection I'm going to tell you when he looks at you and you've covered your sins under the blood he says you're my child you're my redeemed you are loved and highly favored and you are a joint heir to him. Give him praise in the house tonight. Didn't our worship team do a great job? We're going to allow you to be seated this evening. Thank you for choosing to be a part of our service. For each and every one of you that are watching online, thank you for allowing us to be in your home. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord and the presence of the Almighty fill your home and be with you tonight and that you experience the love of the Lord through the power of His Word tonight. Uh, didn't our worship team do a great job? 
I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than coming into the presence of the Lord. We literally can go home when we have come together and worked, worked and, and experienced his love together. Well, I'll tell you what, y'all look amazing tonight. Every single one of you look awesome. You know, it's something like every time I come to church, it's like a family reunion. It is. I get to see people that I love, and I get to see people that I haven't seen for a while. And I want to tell you, I've kind of got this, that we, here at Trinity Lighthouse Church, and for those of you watching online, if you know me very well, I've said if you come once, you're family. That's the way it goes here at Trinity Lighthouse Church. If you come once, you're part of the family. But, uh, g hey, g give yourselves a hand clap. You're part of the family. But I want you to know that coming up in the month of July, tonight will be the last Wednesday night service that we're going to be having because here at Trinity Lighthouse Church, we actually believe that there's something even more powerful uh, um, uh, than, than sometimes just a fellowship. We believe in fellowship, and that is when we get together and we lift up God's name and we, we join together in communion and family, uh, something amazing happens. We get some deep roots, and God begins to nourish and flourish us in special ways. So for the month of July, those of you that are watching online, um, we didn't go up in the rapture on Wednesday nights. Um, we're dedicating every single Wednesday night in the month of July to a very special connection time. There's all kinds of amazing events that are going on. Um, we've just got some food and some fellowship that's going to be taking place. Check the Facebook. Check our website. There's going to be some uh, scheduling that's going to be out there. Do not miss out on an opportunity to get connected. Because I'm telling you, a high five and a hug back in the back, that may not always uh, uh, get you connected and let us know what's going on. But when you've got some opportunity to get together, it matters. So make sure you mark your calendars that we will be uh, getting together in fellowship and uh, all throughout the the uh, Wednesday nights of July, but we will not be having regular services. And one other thing that I have to point out here, uh, Chris and Christine, would y'all stand up? Chris and Christine Wilson, stand up for me. I'm going to embarrass you. Give them a hand clap. I'm going to tell you, so y'all got to stay standing for a second. Number one is, is the Play-Doh that you saw when you were walking in was kind of their inspiration a few months ago. So I'm just, they get all credit for that. But um, uh, they are leaving, so they will not be here on Wednesday nights. They are leaving and taking a new journey into where God's leading them. Um, and I'm just going to tell you guys, y'all's smiles and y'all's faithfulness on Wednesday nights has absolutely been radiating. I love seeing y'all back there. Um, Miss Doretta, I know where you at, Miss Doretta. Where's she hiding at back there? There she is. She's going to be helping helm that on Wednesday night, so you'll see her smiling face. But we just pray the love of the Lord and his favor travel with you. And we're going to be traveling up to Idaho. I, I, Idaho or, yeah, that's exactly right, that place, uh, to visit you. There's a reason to go north when it's hot down here in Texas. Um, but uh, thank you for your, your service and always giving of the heart and being the face of TLC. You know, uh, in, a, in a world of COVID, uh, I, I got to be honest, we honored our first responders, police, law enforcement, nurses, and military, and everybody else that was on the front, front lines. But um, I don't know if you are aware of the awkwardness when you're a greeter at Trinity Lighthouse Church. I mean, we are like, uh, uh, we're huggers around here, but when you walk in and greeters, they don't know whether to high five you, whether to hug you, whether to bow to you. Um, it's just, it, it's, it, it, but, but they've done an amazing job doing one thing, and that is making you feel welcome. And so those of you that are watching online, we promise to do it exactly the way you feel comfortable with. So when you're coming in, we want you to feel perfectly welcome. Well, the title of my message tonight is Don't Throw It Away. And Brother Joel's got a video that I want him to play as we begin this service. But uh, before we play that video, we're right there. Before we play the video, I just want to say a word of prayer as we begin. Every single song that uh, Sister Ari had selected tonight was powerful to me. In the essence that it was referring to a vessel. And uh, so many times in our lives, and I'm going to get to it, and I'm not going to throw the message away yet and give you all the uh, main course before we get to the appetizer and everything else. But so many times in our lives, we look in the mirror and we see imperfection and we see flaws. And I want you to know tonight that God is up to something good. And so no matter what you see in your life today, do not encapsulate God's plans for you because of the place that you're sitting and standing and because of the condition that you see things. You see, God is a God of transformation. He's a God of manifestation. And he's a God of growth. And even his pastor's Gwen's powerful message on Sunday, those of you watching online, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it about seven times. It was powerful. 
When you don't see it, God is at work. So I just want to pray over you tonight. Number one is that the power of the Holy Spirit begin to open up your hearts and your minds as he, I, I know as he is doing in me. And that is this, that I, I literally begin to see myself and see my life and see my future, not through my eyes, but through the power of his vision and the power of his side in, the, in aligning with what his word says. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come together in your presence. We just ask this night, God, that you open up our hearts and our minds. God, we know that we are, we are flawed and imperfect, but God, you make all things new. And I just ask you, Father, this night that not one person leave here like they came. May they walk out of here anchored in the word. May they walk out of here refreshed and renewed. But Father, may they be transformed by the renewing of their mind and the transformation of their heart. And may they see a growth that can only come from you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. Y'all can go ahead and play that video for me. Clay. Squishy, gooey, simple clay. Common and disposable in raw form, this simple element is unrivaled in potential, able to be molded into limitless amounts of shapes and sizes, ever changing as it conforms and reacts to the touch of the potter as he skillfully guides it from start to finish. We are clay. walked in tonight, you not only got a handout, it keeps me from going to midnight tonight, but I'm kind of a simple guy that I love simple things that have powerful meanings to remind us of the power of God working in our lives. You see, you got a little thing of Play-Doh, and those of you that didn't, you better grab them before the kids do, because they thought VBS was starting tonight. <laughs> By the way, that is starting coming up next, uh, next Sunday, so make sure you get connected there. But when you get this clay, I love to place this. Put it in your refrigerator. It's not edible, though. And let me put a clause in here. If you open it up, I promise you I could get fired if it's on the carpet. So please don't open it up and don't eat it. But when you look at Play-Doh, I want you to stick this somewhere as a constant reminder. Because when I see Play-Doh, I see something that is unformed and it's shapeless. And I see something that I don't understand its potential. But when an artist begins to see clay and a potter begins to see clay, they see something that is not only usable, but it has unlimited potential. And there's things it can be shaped into that normal people don't see with the average eye. And God wants you to know tonight that when you see your life, every time the enemy tells you that you've been a mistake and you're a mess up and there's no way that that's gonna change and your life is never gonna be the same, you can look at this clay and say, I am tonight submitting my life into the potter's hands. I know I don't see it. I don't see my relationship changing. I don't see my finances changing. I don't see my children changing or my grandkids changing. But with the power of the Holy Spirit and my ability to submit my life to God, there is unlimited potential in the hands of the potter if I just surrender to him. So don't get out of here without your Play-Doh tonight because I'm telling you, your grandkids, your kids are going to love that. But Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8 says this. It says, yet you, Lord, are our father, 
and we are the clay. You are the potter and we are the work of your hands. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what you're feeling, but the one thing that I am wanting you to walk away with tonight is don't throw the clay away. There are times in my life that me and Cheryl have picked up wads of Play-Doh that Grayson has made stuff with and went, oh, what is this? And we threw it away. And he went, wait, that was my... And I was like, I so didn't see that in that clay, but okay, we're going to go dig it out of the trash and we're going to put it back up on the shelf where it was because he had a vision for it. You see, there's times when each and every one of us, we feel broken. We feel like we're unusable at times, but God wants us to know that he's working on us. He is working behind the scenes. He's working for you and in you. He is shaping you and molding you when you don't see it, when you don't feel it. He is working to bring you into a place of not only being used, to be a blessing to others, but to transform every area of your life. God wants to reshape those places that you feel like are broken. You feel like can't be the same. And I'm going to quote Pink for you. Yes, Pink the singer. She has a song that says, I'm bent, but I'm not broken. Send it to Cheryl all the time. There are times in our lives when we feel like we are unusable because of my past, because of my mistakes, because of my inadequacies. I think there's no way God could ever use me. Can I tell you that God is not about using perfect. He's about using those that will submit themselves to him and say, God, use me and be available. The kingdom of God is not made up of perfect. The kingdom of God is made up of those that will submit themselves to him and say, Father, here am I. Use me. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says this, you may not be convinced that you see it, and I love Pastor Gwen's message, but how? I'm going to tell you, I don't see it. Have you ever looked at a situation and you said, Brian, I don't see it? Are you going to one of these uh, art shows and people are like, well, that's supposed to be a kangaroo on a desert floor, and you're like, I do not see it. There are times when you look at your life, you look at your finances, you look at your job, you look at your situation, you say, Brian, I don't see it. Well, God sees it, and he's convinced of your future. The thing that has to happen is we have to be convinced that in the hands of the potter, he can shape us into anything. And that's what Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, and this is the amplified version. It says, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. You see, when we get confident in what God already knows, then we can actually extinguish the lies of the enemy and stop surrendering and throwing the clay away. Because God says, why did you throw it away? Why did you give up on that? Why did you walk away from that when I was making it into something new? You see, when we want to give up, God's just starting. We have to be confident that we are a work in process. You see, we got to stop looking at our imperfections, stop looking at our failures. God looks at us and he sees a beautiful creation. You say, Brian, me? I mean, I look in the mirror and I say, oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, Cheryl wakes up and screams some morning and it's like, oh, I didn't realize you would. You see, when we see our imperfections and our flaws, one of the things as human nature is, is we're really good at magnifying our weaknesses against someone else's strengths. Anybody ever look on Facebook and say, man, I wish my life was like theirs, but you didn't look behind the pages and they're not going to post their bad days. They only post their good days. You need to look in the mirror and realize that you are a creation that is, that, is, that is made by the master's hands and by the potter's hands. What do you look at and what are we magnifying? Before we throw it away, you need to realize that God didn't make junk. God didn't make you by accident. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and 28 says, So God created mankind in his own image. And in the image of God, he created them, male and female. I'm going to give you a little bit of a relationship 101. Me and Cheryl get in some serious conversations, and she gets in some serious trouble when I hear her talking bad about herself. My hair just doesn't, or this, and I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. First it's me, next it's God. We need to change our vocabulary about what we speak over ourselves because God made something that was amazing. Can I tell you, you're made in his image. When you see your life, I'm not an imperfection. I'm not a mistake. God absolutely had a plan and a purpose for your life because what the Bible says in Genesis when he created male and female, when he created them, verse 28 said, God bless them. What did he do? He blessed them. Everybody say, I am blessed. Those of you online, every lie of the enemy 
You need to stop listening to the lies and start remembering what God's word says. The potter says you're blessed and there is a plan for your life. He says be fruitful, increase in numbers. That one, don't elbow your spouse, that could get you in trouble. It says fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and over every living creature that moves upon the ground. I'm going to tell you, you think you are the bottom, and God says he wants to make you the head. He wants to make you to lend and not to borrow. He wants you to be above and not beneath. He says I'm shaping you into a perfect vessel that is used of him. But we got to realize we're blessed. Don't throw the clay away. Don't give up. You are blessed. You're not cursed. Anybody, well, I guess that's just my family tree. I guess that's just the way I am. No, it's not. Stop speaking death and start speaking life. Realize that clay is pliable. The one thing that you have to do is, is begin to realize that we are all imperfect. Everybody acknowledge that. My Bible says all. Some, no, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But here's the, the complication and the, the struggle that we all have is when we look at our lives, we literally begin to project expectations of ourselves to be at a place that we're not ready to be because God's the one that's working on us. When we look at ourselves, we look at the way that, that, that people view us, so we, we look at the way that we see ourselves, we look at the way that society sees us, and we need to put all that to the side and say, how does God look at me? Because I'm going to tell you, God says you're blessed. God says that you're highly favored. God says that you're a child of the king. And let me express this too. It's Play-Doh. If I give it to Cheryl, she's liable to make a bunny rabbit. And whatever that looks like, I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, you need to stop putting your life in the hands of others and keep your hands in the life of God. And the same thing goes with you can't change someone by direct will of, or conflict, but what you can do is lay them at the feet of Jesus and begin to plead the blood over them and say, Father, I'm placing them in your hands because you're the creator and you're going to shape them, mold them, and make them into what they're meant to be. Our foundation tonight that I really want to begin to look at when you begin to look at the Play-Doh and you begin to walk in that new place of submitting yourself to God is found in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. And this is powerful because I believe, and I, those of you that know me, I've always said that I've, my prayer and my heartbeat has always been, God, let me speak with simplicity, but speak with power. And I love the way God's pretty cool, and I love even Jesus, that he always spoke in parables. He always spoke of simple things to confound the wise. So the only thing I'm going to see is I must be pretty simple because he's using me. But he's using me because I've submitted myself into his hands the same way that he wants to use you if you'll just let your life be pliable in his hands. So Jeremiah says, this is the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. He said, go down to the potter's house and there I will give you a message. Can I tell you that God sometimes wants to speak to you through the most simplest of things if you'll just simply go, God, I need to hear your voice. I've heard God in some of the most simplest things and sometimes God even sounds like Cheryl. I'm just throwing that out there for those of you that are married. Very similar voices, God and Cheryl. I mean, it just comes right out. But it says, go down to the potter's house. There I will give you a message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working on a wheel. Listen to this. But the pot that he was shaping from clay, from Play-Doh, was marred in his hands. And for those of you that don't know what marred is, because I, I struggled with that word, I was like, I could just read that and go, okay, it was marred in his hands and act like I knew what it meant, because I really didn't know what it meant. And so I started thinking about that, and I was like, okay, I better Google it and figure out what it means. Uh, uh, so marred in his hands means it's disfigured. Have you ever felt like your life, and you go, God, I've submitted my life to you, but it feels like my life's a mess? Why does it seem like my finances are a joke. Why does it seem like my relationship is a train wreck? Why does it seem like my kids are all off course? Why does it seem like my job is just all over the board? Why does it seem like things, and, and I've given my life to you. Well, listen to what this says. It says that when he, when he saw that the, the, the clay was marred in his hands, so the potter formed it into what? Into another pot, shaping it as seemed best for him. You see, when you see imperfection, you don't know that that mess that you feel like you're in right now, God says, I'm about to mold you into something amazing. 
Don't you give up on your life. Don't you give up on your job. Don't you give up on your finances. Don't you give up on your relationships. God wants to take you to another level. But what's so powerful about that passage and what he began to show Jeremiah was, as he said, that, that that clay was on a potter's wheel. And I'm going to tell you that that potter's wheel is, is a transformational place that God wants to take you into and lead you and guide you. But we got to trust the potter. So the first point that I want you to walk away with tonight is this, that when you trust the potter, You've got to know that he's working on everything. You may not see it right now. You may not know it right now. But God is working behind the scenes. Uh, Philippians chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. And this is the amplified version. It says, Thanks, thanking God for your participation and your partnership, both your comforting fellowship and gracious contributions. Listen to this. In advancing the good news regarding salvation from the first day you heard it, until now. I am convinced and confident of this very thing. And I read this earlier that he that began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus return. You see the apostle Paul, you said when you're trusting God in the middle of a problem, you may not see it, but God says, if you'll hold on, I'm going to get you there. Don't you give up before the breakthrough. Don't you give up before the healing. Don't you give up before he actually shapes you into what you're meant to be. The apostle Paul was in prison when he was encouraging them. Right now, you may not feel like there's any hope, but God says if you'll begin to give him praise and give him glory, he will begin to illuminate powerful things. In the very last portion of that passage, it says this. It says, all of you share in his matchless grace with me. Can I tell you that when you're being pressed, that song, New Wine, when you're being pressed and you're being crushed, there is a grace that abounds when you're in the potter's hands that you say, Brian, I don't like this. I don't like the, the discomfort. I don't like the picture of what I see. God's telling you tonight, stop looking at the now and start looking at the future of where you're going to be. God wants to transform you. He wants you to stay on the wheel. Don't get off whenever it hurts. Because I'm going to tell you, transformation and growth makes you lead into a new place. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9 says this. What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does the clay pot argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute the one that shapes it and says, stop, you're doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? Have you ever asked God, God, do you really know what you're doing? Do you not see what's taking place in my life? Do you not see the mess that I'm in today? I'm going to tell you, if you'll trust the potter, he wants to take everything that you see today and shape it into something that's going to be beautiful. It's going to move you into a place to where you can receive the goodness and the grace and the glory and the love of God. God's proud of you. Just like what he said in Genesis, he blessed you today. Number one is we got to know that he's working on everything. When you don't see it, we got to trust the potter and know he's working on everything. Number two is we got to trust and know that he has plans for us and he's going to complete everything in you. Stop giving up before the process is over with. When the potter begins to shape and mold and make something, at first, first glance you think it's not done yet, it's not done yet, it's not done yet. And then when it comes off the potter's wheel, where does it go? Into the fire. You think, Brian, I went out of a bad place into a worse place. Sometimes you may say, Brian, this has gone from bad to worse. But I'm going to tell you, the one thing that we need to keep our eyes on is trusting and knowing that the potter knows exactly where you're at. And he's shaped you and molding you. And I promise you, when you go through the fire, when you go through the water, you're going to come out stronger, better, and be used for the kingdom of God when you submit your life to him. Because when we trust and know that he has plans for us and that he's going to complete that work, listen to what Ephesians chapter 2 says. Some of you need to change the picture. Put this, this Play-Doh in your bathroom. Every time you walk into the mirror and you look in the mirror, you need to say, God's working on me and there's great things coming. Because what he says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he says, we are, for, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do all things. What things? All good things he planned for us a long time ago. God wants you to know that he had plans for you a long time ago. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Some of you go, man, God didn't know what I was going to mess up at. I mess up daily, promise you. But I love that my God knew. I'm not advocating sin. 
I'm telling you that God is, his, is our ever and very present help in time of trouble. He's our strength. He's our advocate. He is right there with us. But Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, before I formed you. This transformed my heart when I think about my ability to shape my own life. And I realize that if I leave my, my life in the hands of the creator, he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Knew my bad attitude. Knew what I look like when I wake up in the morning. Ask Cheryl. She's seen that too. It ain't pretty. Listen, it says, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to nations. God's got a special use for you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, behold, I have plans for you. Good plans for you to prosper you, to give you a hope, to give you a future, not to harm you. You need to know today that God is shaping your life. He's positioned you for promotion. He's positioned you for plenty. He wants to pour into you goodness and grace and mercy. So when we remember and know that God is working on everything behind the scenes, we trust and know that he's got plans for us. But the one thing that is the hardest part about this Play-Doh, the hardest part about every single thing that we ever experience in our lives is number three. And that is this. We gotta choose to stay on the potter's wheel Always allow him to shape us and our future. You see, my ways equal my results. God's ways equal God's results. I'm going to tell you, I don't want to do anything and ask God to bless it. I want to walk in the blessings that God's already given me. You see, I'm trying to figure out how to pay for it, and God wants me to surrender and let him give it to me. I'm going to tell you, some of you in this room, you need to surrender and give it to God. God says, I'm waiting to unfold a blessing upon you. I'm going to tell you, Chris and Christine, God's going before you. There are blessings and benefits that are awaiting you where you go. His blessings are going to overtake you. When we stay on the potter's wheel, well, how do I stay on the potter's wheel? The first way that we stay on the potter's wheel is by not trying to control the mold and the shape and argue with the potter. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 is trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own what? understanding quit trying to take the clay and mold it yourself god i got this as pastor said it i've made a lot of good suggestions to god and he's yet to take one of them in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight when you really begin to seek god and go god i want your will god i give you my heart i give you my life matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says seek ye first the kingdom of god and what god wants then all of your needs will be met as well can we trust him? Can we trust him? Can we stay on the wheel? Can you trust him in the pain? Can you trust him in the dark? Can you trust him in the dirt? As Pastor Gwen said, can you trust him when you feel lonely? Can you trust him when you feel broken? Don't throw the clay away. You see, Luke chapter 22, verse 42 says, Father, and I'm going to tell you, if Jesus himself was going through a pressing, he didn't want to stay on the wheel. Tonight you may be saying, God, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I don't, I'm not strong enough. The temptation is overwhelming. The situation is over, overtaking me. I can't do this. Jesus himself said, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, this cup of suffering, but do what you want, not what I want. I'm going to tell you, it is painful to submit and stay on the wheel. But here's what's powerful. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9 says, The Lord says, My thoughts are not like your thoughts. My ways are not like your ways. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. What I'm saying tonight is this. If you'll surrender and stay on the wheel, God wants to transform you and he wants to give you the blessings and desires of your heart but it means you're going to have to stay on the wheel trust the potter let him move in you let him shape you and give you the very things that is meant to be in your life i started with this verse and i'm going to wrap it up with these philippians chapter 1 verse 6 being confident of this i'm going to tell you i've done a lot of things and as that song says my way and it ain't always worked out well. Take your Play-Doh home. God began a work in every single person in this room and those of you watching online. Don't throw the clay away. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your job. Don't give up on your kids, your grandkids. 
I'm going to tell you, if you'll take them and lay them at the feet of Jesus, don't throw it away. Psalms chapter 147 verse 3 says this, He heals the brokenhearted and He binds up their wounds. Psalms 34 and 18 says, The Lord is near the brokenhearted and He saves those that are crushed in spirit. Tonight you may feel like you are a messed up piece of clay. You may feel like, man, does the potter know what he's doing? Did he have any idea that I was going to end up here? Look at my life. Look at the things that are going on. I'm embarrassed. I want to... We went over to Pickles and Pottery, and this ain't even my notes. Went over to Pickles and Pottery about four or five months before Mom passed away. It's not in my notes, but it came back to it. Um, and she got this angel, and she was painting this angel. And at first, <laughs> the color she was using was awesome, and it was matching the wings and the hair. And mom couldn't hardly see with her without her glasses. And uh, uh, next thing you know, I look over and, and she's been taking a lot of different colors and they're all over the angel. And she looked down and she said, Brian, she said, this is so ugly. I can, I just, I just, can, we, not, can we not fire it? Can we not put it through the, the firing process? And I said, no, mama, you painted it. It's beautiful. Three weeks later, we went back to Pickles and Pottery, and she was sitting in the back seat, and Dad will attest to this. She pulled that angel out. We had it back there on the table at her funeral. When she pulled that angel out, it was the most beautiful, radiant picture that looked exactly like her. That angel sits in front of her wedding picture when her and dad got married. You see, God wants to take you tonight and he wants to prove to you that everything that you see is imperfect. He wants to make perfect tonight. I want y'all to stand with me. time what you see is a mess God tonight he wants you to do one thing and I always give you a spiritual and I give you a practical well not the spiritual and the practical are all the same stay on the wheel I know it hurts I know you don't see it I know you don't even understand it but if you'll stay in the presence of God and here in a few minutes, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I want to pray with you. I believe at these altars, transformation takes place. This is the potter's wheel. For those of you that are not familiar and maybe not accustomed to the way that we worship and, and, the, and the places that, 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 that God can truly do the most miraculous things, your ability to actually surrender and walk from your seat down to these altars as you literally raising your hands in a universal sign of surrender and say, God, I'm done doing it my way. I don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't know how it's going to happen. But God, if tonight I can do one thing, and that is walk from where I'm at to these altars right now, I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you my children. I'm going to give you my future. Right now, some of you should be coming right now. There are decisions and there are things that you are struggling with. There are imperfections that you've been looking at. Right now, you need to make your way to the altar. Right now, you need to be moving from where you're at, or you can continue to walk out those doors and say, God, I'm going to do this my way. God says, I want to transform you and I want to change you. God wants to shape you. You see, God sees the way that you see it, but he wants to begin to open your eyes when you walk from where you're at. I'm telling you, some of you right now, God's speaking to you. You've been looking at your life the wrong way. You've been looking at it and saying, God, I got this. I got this. You need to say, God, I give it to you. 
You've been trying to fix people at your work. You've been trying to change situations by direct will or conflict. You've been trying to find your healing, whether it was in, in, in different ways and different things. And God says, if you'll submit your life to me, I'm going to let you walk away in a new mold, in a new shape. He said, I'm shaping you. Once again, he said, I'm going to transform you with the renewing of your mind, your heart, your mind, and your spirit. I'm going to tell you from where you're at right now, you ought to be making a way and saying, God, I want to stay on the wheel. You see, our human nature is, is I don't like change. I am a creature of habit. But I'm going to tell you, when you begin to submit your life to God, God says, I'm going to take that pliable play, that marred place where you see imperfection. And he said, I'm going to shape you into something beautiful. Heavenly Father, I thank you. God, even as I'm praying tonight, if you're in this room and you say, God, I have been trying to do it my way with no results. You need to make your way right now. This is a potter's wheel. This is a potter's wheel. You need to quit saying, I've got it. Those of you online right now, you need to be saying, God, I give you my life. I'm going to make my way back to church. I'm going to get connected. I'm going to come back to the potter's wheel and let him shape me, mold me, and make me into what you've designed me to be. Some of you have been doing it your way, and you need to surrender and realize that the God of your creation, he's blessed you and wants to shape you and make you. Father, I thank you for supernatural transformation. God, in the hearts and minds of every single person that's under the sound of my voice and those that are watching online, God, the universal sign of surrender is hands extended. God, every person in the room, God, I ask that they just raise their hands, God, and say, God, I give you my life. But God, not when it's easy. God, those hard things. Some of you in here, you've been fighting personality. You've been fighting attitudes. You've been fighting the very character trait of everything that's inside of you. And it's not just your family legacy. It is a spirit that is controlling you. And God says, I want to set you free tonight. There is freedom that is found on the potter's wheel. He wants to mold you and make you and shape you. Father, I thank you that as we submit our lives to you, God, this night I thank you for supernatural strength to fill and infuse every person here and watching online. May they experience a transformation of mind and body. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for the fruits of the Spirit that are manifest in their life. A manifold presence of grace, which is power and strength and ability to stand in the face and to stay on the wheel and to trust the potter and to know that there is a plan and a purpose for them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. Take that Play-Doh and put it where you can see it visibly. Because I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest struggles you have, I'm going to tell you, is me. The Bible says that he that hardens his heart I ain't forgiven that person. Nope. God's asking you, tonight it's time to bring that hardness and let him make it pliable again. Supernatural healing and transformation. The Lord bless you and keep you. We're going to dismiss you. But I want to encourage you before you leave, I'm just telling you, this is the potter's wheel. Not just this services, but services to come. Those of you that are watching online, make your way back to the Father's house. Sundays, Wednesdays, not in July, Wednesdays, get connected and stay on the potter's wheel and put your life back in his hands. And I promise you, I promise you, he ain't never done me, done me nothing but good. You see, I'm not that good and I'm not that smart. But the one thing that I know is, is that he that created me will make things amazing out of me when I put myself in his hands. God wants to make you a new creation. Be blessed. We love you. May the peace of God shine upon you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just.